Okay, today we're going to try out the new container use for agents. Let's check it out. We're in the repo now. We can see this is going to allow us to have containerized environments for our coding agents so we can run many of them in parallel in the background without clobbering each other's work on my local machine. All right, and I want to go and try today this Amazon Q Developer CLI chat configuration. So a couple things we need to do to set this up. Once you've got uh, Q installed and hooked up to your AWS account, we're going to go ahead and make sure we've got this MCP configuration for container use because Q Developer is going to connect to container use via MCP. All right, let's check that out. So we're going to see if we have that file. We do. You can see it's for container use. We're going to run this command, cu stdio, and that's really it. So let's quit that. That's looking great. Uh, then we need to make sure we have the agent instructions in place. And these are going to give the agent some helpful tips on how to use container use instead of writing to local files. So let's run that. Great. And let's cat that directory. There's Q helping me right there. And it says here, always only use environments for everything and leave Git alone and so forth. So um, yeah, helpful that will keep everything safe and then we can also copy this block here which is going to have us trusting just the tools that are coming out of container use so the environment tools from container use only so let's fire up q chat with that you can see that we've got one of one mcp servers initialized and in fact that one is the container use Excellent. Okay, so let's start off with a simple project. Uh, build a Flask app in an environment and return the URL to me. Great. All right, we can see that we're using the tools from container use without it prompting us about whether we'd like to use it this time or whether we trust it for the rest of the session. You can also see we have this environment ID that keeps popping up, the gorgeous cowbird. Uh, so this whole name here, Flask, Hello World, Gorgeous Cowbird, that's going to be our way of keeping track of this particular environment. So we can run cu, and the cu command will allow us to list environments. We can see we've got that one environment right there. It'll also let us watch and see what checkpoints have been made. Now you'll notice that this is in a space kind of off to the side, not affecting actually my project. It's not, it's not even, uh, you know, affecting my Git history. I've just got my one initial commit that gave me a readme. So very, very cool. So over on this side, it says that we are up and running. So we're gonna actually take a look at this inside of Safari. And sure enough, it looks like we have a very basic app. Um, now, if I want to take those changes, I can use CU again, if I like, and I can actually merge that environment's changes right in. So again, we'll say CU list, and I'll say CU merge, and we're going to merge this environment in right now. Awesome. So now if I take a look, and now I have in my directory an app.py, and if I get log, now I've got several commits, including my initial one where I started. 
That looks great. Cool, but a little boring. So now we're gonna say, great. Now let's make the site more exciting. Give me a rainbow sparkles version. And we will run that. And then over in another window, the same directory, we'll start off QChat. Also here. And we'll, I'll say, give me a, uh, how about a uh, heavy metal version of the site. Have that going. And over here, we might as well say, give me a Sherlock Holmes themed version of the site. Let's see what we get with that. Okay, and so we've got all these three running in parallel. And then let's actually open up another window here and let's go into that directory. Still, we just see our original contents, but let's watch. And we can see that there's some things happening in here. We've got some new, we've got the Sherlock version, we've got a metal version, um, and so forth. So we have some things are happening inside of here. Great. So um, let's actually jump out of that and let's take a look and see if we've got anything done. Ah, uh, great. So it looks like we've got one version done here. Let's see if it's a little more exciting. Oh yeah. Whoa, rainbow sparkles for sure. Awesome. Okay. That looks good. How about uh, how about another version? Let's see, this one's still working. Here we've got uh, another one that's still being worked on. Look, I guess really trying to really trying to hone that in there. And then let's go over to this one. And it looks like we're also working away in the environment a little bit. We're really getting, I mean, this is getting serious. We've got like class list, headbang. We've got some serious things happening in here. <laughs> okay, okay, cool. It looks like we've got something happening. Let's, uh, let's check that out. I cannot wait to see what we came up with here. Uh, let's add another tab. Whoa, the most brutal flask app in the universe. Amazing. Can I head back? Oh my goodness. Wow. That is too much. That is, okay. That is too much. Um, wow. And were there any Easter eggs in this one? I don't know. It's just, it's just so happy. All right. And let's see what happened over here. Looks like um, this last assignment. Oh, the Sherlock one. Yeah, that one's a little open-ended. Oh, but it looks like it's also coming to an end. Yes. Excellent. Oh yeah, I've got some Victorian era styling. Amazing. Wow, this is quite involved. Okay, let's take a look at what we got. And we're gonna go back over here. Uh, let's just slip this one right in between these two. Oh yeah, okay, you know. The game is afoot, indeed. Not bad, okay, very, yes. And we actually have some, oh yeah, it's quite, it is quite uh, complete, this particular one. Very good, yeah. So we got our rainbow sparkles, we got our Sherlock Holmes, and we have our headbanging metal flask <laughs> application. That one might be my favorite. Okay, very, very cool. Um, nice. And so now, where are we at? Well, um, with any of these now, I'm just gonna jump out of this, and I'm going to see uh, let's use CU to uh, list our environments. Again, here's our different environments that we have here. 
And um, then let's go ahead and uh, take a look at the uh, at all the different work trees that we have going on here that came off of that same initial one. Also very, very cool. And then let's actually take one of these. I think I'm kind of partial to the, the head banging metal one. So um, I'm going to use the CU uh, merge command. So I'm going to say CU list. I'm going to say CU merge and the metal flask gap. Boom. Okay, now I have these changes locally and I am good to go. Now, the other thing I could do is if I was curious just to see, you know, hey, what actually happened in this other environment? Let me do a CU terminal into there. So now we're actually building the environment that was used there. And I can see, let's actually get ourselves a better terminal here. Let's cat this one here. And we can see that we're rendering this index.html. Great. So um, let's take a look at that maybe. Let's see what we have here. We have this render template index.html. So it's probably in my templates index.html. Index Great. Okay, there we go. And here is how we got the, so we were able to accomplish the rainbows and the sparkles. We get a function to create sparkles. We've even got, you know, all kinds of sparkle counts and sparkle positions, you know, all the important things when you're going for rainbow sparkles which we were able to uh, enjoy uh, right over here. So very, very cool. So this gives you the ability to have these different environments all running in parallel in the background without clobbering your code base so that you can do many experiments right here on your own machine and then only keep the things that you really care about in the end like this one. Oh yeah. Can't wait to ship that to prod.